Great, cool. Well, thank you so much for deciding that we should do this, basically. <laughs> um, Pleasure. Yeah. So we just um, installed your show the other day. It's really exciting to see all of it kind of like come together like this, because I feel like mostly I've seen your work either online or when it came to paint out last year. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's very exciting to see it all hanging and together it makes makes such a difference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even just the difference from like being in your studio and working on stuff and then seeing it like professionally with white walls, it's always like. I don't know, I find it very, found it very satisfying, so I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah, I mean, it feels really good, and it's my first solo, yeah. so so it's, you know, especially special for me, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I can see how, you know, working and finishing the works, finishing the pieces, how important it is to think through, you know, a little bit the plan and how I want to hang it, but at the same time, how then the curation changes um, how they look together, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's always a little bit scary going into like with the curator because it's your baby and, <laughs> you, <laughs> and you want to be in control. But um, at the same time, when I'm working with uh, Tracy, I've worked with her for a while now, and, um, and I, it's very cool seeing her work with shows because she has so much respect for the work, but mm. at the same time, like she has such a keen eye mm -hmm. on how to stuff, tell a story within a room. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, I hope you're happy with that. Yeah. Um, anyways, so obviously you are a landscape painter. Mm -hmm. um, when did you get into doing landscapes? Has it always kind of been your focus, or when did you start? I think I started with, you know, as we all probably do, painting a little bit of everything and trying different things, trying trying things on, seeing which topic um, resonates the most, you know, with each each of us. I think I've narrowed down landscapes. Uh, a few years ago when I started uh, studying at the PCA just just because you know I had to potentially focus a little bit more uh, and and pick a direction and and because I just love being in nature and uh, it's always an inspiration I found that an easy easy transition to, to stop painting the other things and continue painting uh, landscapes um, so yeah, I, I really, mm -hmm. I really love doing that. Yeah. yeah. So you do a lot of like on plein air painting, but do you also paint from uh, reference photos and stuff as well? Yeah, especially the bigger size works. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't taken large canvases yeah. like that outside yet. Yeah. I know artists who do, and I, I'm definitely keen to one day <laughs> take a massive canvas outside. Um, but yeah, this work is actually painted outside. Um, these on this wall here, the smaller ones. Yeah, the first two. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just the first two. Oh yeah, nice. And uh, then yeah, for the other ones, I mostly use reference photos from my travels or trips or mm -hmm. you know visits to the forest. Uh, mm -hmm. I love going to the forest to relax, unwind, and uh, and then yeah, I use reference photos. So, although this one I think is fully from imagination. Oh really? Yeah, which I which I rarely do. I do prefer looking at something. Yeah. And I guess expressing, you know, how I felt in that moment or what it makes me feel. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, just looking at that, I remember it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just, uh, so do you feel like it's a very different process when you're painting, um, like in person at the spot versus painting from a photo? Like, how would you describe kind of the difference in those processes? Yeah, painting plein air does make you look. Uh, I don't know if deeper or more attentively, and the light, you know, changes obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's obvious when you stand in the place and paint for a few hours, then then you start really noticing how the light changes and, and the sun goes across uh, because your colors change. So you need to adapt to that. So I, I do like that challenge as well. And um, yeah, but I also, you know, painting from reference photos gives you the time to just you know take it slowly and, and do it multiple times and come back to the piece over and over again when necessary. Planner painting you kind of have to do do it and then you're done and then you're going home. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that's that's the biggest difference. Yeah yeah um, and so you um, obviously Polish did you paint a lot back on, like in Poland or did that kind of start when you moved to Australia? No, I was always painting since, yeah. since very young, and we were moving uh, cities, you know, when I was young, and I always, mm -hmm. 
uh, ask my parents for new art materials and you know going to different classes and, yeah. and new books and, and all that so mm-hmm. yeah definitely a long lifelong passion yeah. of mine yeah so like landscape wise Poland versus Australia like could you talk a little bit about because um, I feel like uh, Australian landscape painting has such a rich history and everyone kind of talks about how the light is different here mm. and how the color of the foliage and everything kind of creates these like very inspiring landscapes mm. um, and I don't know if you've done a lot of uh, landscape painting um, back in Poland but could you talk to me about that? Yeah, I think when I started painting in Poland, I well, first of all, I was super young, yeah. and so I don't think I was mature enough to pay attention to that mm-hmm. at the time. So now, when people ask me that, you know, my straight answer is I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> but recently, a few months ago, I went back in Poland to oh. Poland and I painted uh, a plan, actually a, a big size like that size yeah. planner painting in my dad's garden, mm-hmm. and. And so I did paint a landscape. Uh, so, so I guess that's <laughs> that's something that I can now compare. Yeah. Um, I I love the nature in Australia here, and the sky is so much bluer. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the, there is definitely something with the light here, and and I just just you know I'm very inspired. And also the shapes of the trees. Uh, I think because it's you know new for my brain in a way. Mm-hmm. It's not something I grew up with. It always just inspires me, and and, and um, something I, yeah. yeah I'm drawn no, to. No, I can I can relate to that. Not having grown up in Australia mm. as well, like um, because a lot of Australia can feel quite Eurocentric, like mm. very European or even very American. But the thing that is so very uniquely Australian is the like flora mm-hmm. and the font and the eucalyptus trees. Like they don't. You don't see that in Europe, you know, so mm-hmm. it's very uniquely Australian and I think, yeah, not having grown up with it, you kind of notice it a little bit. More. Yeah. Um, so, well, that's cool, yeah. Um, and even the diversity of the different plants, uh, mm-hmm. I'm always, you know, super amazed when I go, <laughs> when I go, you know, to travel or even, you know, on a short trip outside of Melbourne. Yeah, super inspiring. Yeah, yeah, and then my uh, my partner's uh, parents from the U.S. visited, and, and they wanted to buy some flowers, and they went and they saw all of these native flowers in the flower shops, and were just like in awe. And <laughs> I mean, I've lived here for a few years now, so I've kind of gotten used to the native flowers. I still think they're amazing, but to them, they were just like mm-hmm. shocked at how sculptural mm-hmm. and colorful they are. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, um, so I was looking a little bit at. Uh, the works in the hallway mm-hmm. that are a little bit different from the ones that we are showing in this gallery. Um, are those newer works or are they older? They are newer. Mm-hmm. They were uh, created kind of in parallel, well, in parallel, um, and at university as well. Um, I guess my exercise for myself was how can I abstract the landscape even more? How can I push? You know, it is very colorful. For example, this one and and quite abstract. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, still very obviously landscape. Exactly, yeah. and and you can see the reflection and even you know a little boat shed and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. So I wanted to see how how far can I take it to to full abstraction. You know, and finding like a middle point and finding a way to express the landscape in a non-obvious way and but obviously using the colors and um, using very dynamic brush brush strokes some of these pieces are a little bit more you know precise pre- precise yeah. yeah yeah and and created over and over like in layers mm-hmm. and those works outside some of them you know it's really just the dynamism and, and really letting go of wanting to represent. Yeah. Um, so that's what I was trying to achieve there, which I mm-hmm. think, uh, yeah, I really like the, the colors and how how fresh it feels as well. Yeah, no, I um, I think it's a really, like, it's a, it's a good move to kind of see because you already are doing, you know, it's not photorealism. Um, so you are kind of already pushing towards abstracting landscapes and then kind of pushing even further and see like how far can I go until it becomes ridiculous or that's right something completely different that's right you know because it's kind of like you want to find your boundaries as an artist and you want to push the boundaries yes and then you can kind of like work your way 
back exactly. and find where, like, where that sweet spot is. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's right. That's right. And, and all the way to those first three works, I think, are so abstracted that if it, they were not shown in the context of a landscape exhibition, they could easily, you know, just be evaluated as fully abstract. Yeah. And, and some of them are. So, so yeah, that's almost the, the boundary that way. Uh, but I, I still see landscapes in them, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I think that's. I think. Yeah. I was because uh, I was looking at them the same way, trying to figure out like, would these still be classified as landscapes? Mm-hmm. Like, and but I think that'll be very interesting once people kind of start moving through the gallery more and moving through the hallway, and because obviously the same artist, mm-hmm. but. Um, you'll be able to kind of see some of the brush strokes in the more abstract pieces and kind of pick up those mm-hmm. actions in, um, sorry, the more abstract landscapes, you can pick that up in the abstract um, paintings as well. So I thought that was really cool because um, I'm, I'm glad you're exhibiting them like, mm-hmm. along with these works mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. those could very easily just be like, this is studio practice work, but I think it's, um, it kind of lets people in on the artist process. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for the future, do you think you're going to want to do more fully abstract pieces or do you want to kind of stay still doing landscape? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I do like both and I do like looking at something and responding to something specific. Mm-hmm. Uh, I. I did enjoy, I guess, creating them, you know, fu- like fully letting go of, of referencing anything specific and, and focusing more on the brush stroke and on the action and, and on the color. Um, so I think I'll just, you know, keep exploring both. Uh, I, I don't think I need to choose one or the other. I think I'm still at a phase where I can explore more. Uh, what I'm doing more of now is. Uh, using this fluoro background and painting on that um, and exploring how far can I can push that. So yeah. uh, I think more, more pieces like that coming. Yeah. 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 Oh, that makes me so excited. That's honestly one of my favorite techniques. <laughs> yeah. When I was at art school, um, the girl who had the studio next to me had a very similar technique where mm-hmm. um, she used this like bright pink fluoro backgrounds and mm-hmm. then let that shine through. Yeah. And I've never really seen it before, but I yeah. think it's so striking and yeah. really fun. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Um, yeah, so last question, which is a bit more gaswork centric mm-hmm. because we're doing a paint out yes. now again this year, which you did last year, yeah. and you won one of our prizes. But this year we're doing it a little bit different because we're doing paint out to music. Mm-hmm. So do you think, um, how do you think music and landscape kind of work together because usually when you're doing a landscape painting you just have the kind of ambient noise of, mm-hmm. um, of the world of the forest wherever mm-hmm. you are but adding music into that do you think that kind of um, adds or makes it a little bit messy or where do you think you're going to take your paintings um, yeah because i am coming to the paint mm-hmm. on sunday morning so uh, well maybe i can you know tell you after <laughs> Yeah, because I was thinking about that because I saw people either doing straight, like, kind of ignoring the music Uh or just doing completely abstract, only listening Mm -hmm. to the music. And Mm -hmm. so I'm curious if if anyone could, like, combine combine Mm -hmm. them. So, um, but I feel like there's something very lyrical about your work already. Mm -hmm. Um, and even the name of the show, which is like Nature's Frequency, mm-hmm. we are talking about kind of sound or amping up mm-hmm. the color. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, waves and energy, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I think in the brief or the paint out, when I was signing up, I, I kind of assumed I'm going to ignore the landscape and mm-hmm. just paint to the music, but you know, you gave me the idea now of, okay, well, you know, have, still having a little bit of that landscape and guessworks, yeah. ambience, and then mm-hmm. how the music changes that. But I recently had a conversation with my sister. I was painting, and we were talking, and she asked, uh, does the fact that we are talking while you're painting, does it change your painting? 
And uh, so it's similar to, I guess, whatever we were listening to. And I said, yes, <laughs> it does, because at the, in that conversation, she pissed me off a little bit. So I was energized and I was doing quicker brush marks. And I'm like, absolutely, it's definitely, you know, different. So uh, yeah, whatever we listen to, whatever we surround ourselves with, uh, I think impacts us. So we, I think we should, you know, choose the good things that impact us in a positive way, ideally. Yeah. Um, so I will be choosing the music that I like. <laughs> yeah. well, there will be three options for you. Yeah, great. Right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it.